I would like to now introduce our first speaker. His interest is in developments in art and technology, mixed reality technologies and human computer interaction. He has many notable exhibitions across the globe. And he is currently giving lectures uh, on new media art to our student teachers. He is Mr. Paul Lincoln from Visual and Performing, for Performing Arts NIE. Let's welcome Paul to the warm applause. Okay, so uh, today I'm gonna share with you uh, how I use Facebook as my virtual art studio and I'll sort of explain the background behind why I use Facebook for this kind of stuff. Uh, you've had a very lovely introduction of me. Uh, I teach at the Visual and Performing Arts uh, Academic Group in NI right here in NIE, and I teach art subjects that range from uh, drawing, uh, photography, video, new media studies, and stuff like that, okay? Okay, so uh, here are my objectives. Um, the objectives for me uh, today is to share with you how I use Facebook as a way to sort of uh, replicate, to try and uh, develop a kind of artist studio uh, way of working uh, in my classroom. Uh, I'd like to also share the observations made using the, this mode of uh, teaching and learning. So, okay, background. I come from an arts background. Uh, when I was in art school, we used to have studios. We used to have studios where we used to spend our hours, days, and nights doing work. Uh, in the studio, which looked something like this, would be terribly messy, there'll be stuff all over the place, there'll be friends all over the place, friends meaning classmates, and we'll all be working towards common artistic goals. Uh, we'll all be trying to investigate, we'll be uh, brainstorming, we'll be experimenting, we'll be exploring. And this was a communal space that we shared for a year usually as a final year art student. And uh, the kind of learning that we had was, um, was very much a self-development uh, route. And uh, it was one of deep exploration and deep experimentation. So what happens, understanding what happens in this, in this art studio? Uh, in the art studio, it's real time. We're in front of students, we're, I'm sorry, we're in front of our classmates, we're talking to them in real time, we're looking at the stuff they're making, we're seeing what they're making, we're talking, we're commenting, we're, 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 we're giving our opinions. Our art lecturers will come in and they will give us their opinions, they will give us suggestions on what to do next. So it was a very much a real time environment. It was also a creative space. It was a space where we were given to experiment, to share, to explore. It was social, it was communal, and it was also somewhat collaborative. We would help friends out, we would show friends what we've learned. And it was a space for self-direction and diversity. Now one of the problems that we had also, a temporal space. The art studio for us was unfortunately a temporal space. It was given to us on the final year of our art degree, and by the end of the year, when we're done with our works, it goes away. And all the stuff, all the remnants, all the artifacts of what we've done gets cleared away or more often than not goes into a skip at the back of the building. So the art studio, though ideal, though nice, though fantastic in terms of real-time collaboration, communication, sharing, was unfortunately temporal. Now, bearing that in mind, and bearing this in mind, uh, which I think some of you would be already familiar with, 21st century skills, um, the art studio worked well with these 21st century sensibilities in fact that it supported the idea of creativity, innovation, critical thinking, A, B, C, and D. All right? So the broad picture of my uh, pedagogical approach in my current classroom uh, in, over here in NIE um, it's not entirely discipline-based. It's, it's, well, it is discipline-based, but it's very much student-centered in terms of their own imitative learning. Um, the students are encouraged to learn through discovery via ill-structured problems and very much via cooperative learning strategies. 
with a small amount of lectures to pad knowledge and to unify the information that they're learning. This is what I do now, all right? Earlier on, I talked about what happens in, a, in an art studio uh, when learning an art subject. So in the classroom today, uh, we also do similar things, but however, we don't have art studios in NIE. We don't have studios where students can spend their waking hours uh, for a year. We have just classrooms. Uh, where it's, they, they shuffle off to different classrooms. And I needed to find a way for them to have the same experience as an art studio where they can have a communal space to discuss and, and, and share their work. Over here, uh, what we have are discrete spaces that they go to and shuffle across. So we needed to find a way around that. So, um, in our classes here, uh, the students learn through ill-structured questions that students have to solve cooperatively. Uh, they do utilize online resources. Um, there's less traditional, it's a bit more of a flipped classroom, there's less traditional lectures and uh, teacher-led demonstrations. Uh, students have to uh, do a lot of sharing, do a lot of uh, making and doing and, and sharing in class. So, to try and combat the situation where I don't have a communal space for students to go to, as I mentioned earlier, I went onto Facebook. And uh, I used it, broadly speaking, as a kind of learning management system for me, though that's not a very sexy name for it. So what happens on Facebook, okay? Um, students will be able to share information that they make, that they find, sorry. Uh, for instance, uh, this here is a student, Suhaila. Uh, she's just found out some information about what sound foaling is. This is well part of the course requirements. And uh, she has voluntarily shared information with her classmates of what she's found. Uh, so this over here is information that she's found. She's been able to share uh, things like video and uh, photographic links to it. Similar in a sense, if she was in an actual art studio, if she found out some information from reading, she will be able to oratorically tell her friends about it. She may be able to show them pictures. Because we don't have that studio space, we use a platform like this, like Facebook, to be able to do that. Of course, the good part of it is that it stays around forever, well, as long as Facebook survives. Um, in my virtual space of Facebook, uh, students also share photographs that they have taken and they share photographs that they have taken almost as soon as they've taken them. Uh, so that's, that comes as close as possible to the idea of real time for me as well. So these are photographs taken by students. This, this, well, this is in January, but this were posted up as soon as the activity was done. It was done through their mobile phone. And uh, here are other students liking it, commenting it, talking about it and uh, pretty much living in the spirit of what uh, an actual art studio would be like, where they'll be able to see what they've done and be able to talk about it. Yeah. Sharing as soon as it's done, yeah, okay. Uh, what I've also done is that I've also started to document the students' works, the students making works, uh, so they can sort of see themselves making their works as well. So these are photographs that I've taken. Uh, they were doing a task where they were getting used to the video camera and understanding how it works. And uh, yeah, OK. So this is them on that day. And it was posted also soon after. No, actually, it wasn't posted soon after. Posted it at night when I got home uh, of, of them working. Fong, one of my most prolific Facebook posters and uh, 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 A-class enthusiastic student. Uh, Fong got really interested in the course that I was doing. He, he, he used to post quite a lot of information that he found as, as a student. And uh, this is actually his uh, posting uh, that he, uh, of things that he was doing outside the classroom beyond my requirements of class. He, he was taking the knowledge that, I had, that, that he had learned in the class and he was setting his own stuff up in, at home and he was making stuff at home. Uh, Incidentally, I don't know whether I have that slide with me, but Fong has gra graduated or graduating. Uh, he's about a year away from this module that he did, and he's still posting. So he hasn't really stopped. 
Okay, uh, so here we have more students voluntary, voluntarily sharing information. Um, I also have a few indicators that I can see, that I can use on Facebook, that I can tell that everyone's hopefully seen it. Uh, I've got that little thing there that says seen by everyone. Hopefully they saw it and not the cat. Uh, that's kind of nice to know that, everyone's, uh, that everyone is looking. Uh, that's at least at the first level. <clears throat> and uh, one of the other ways of confirming that students are looking is uh, a dialogue amongst <coughs> me and the students and the students amongst each other as well. And that is somewhat captured uh, in the conversation thread that's happening. Here we have an example that Farah, she found something on the internet. She found, an, uh, uh, she found this uh, artist who had taken these photographs in Hong Kong, and she's sharing about it. And other here, here other students are, are commenting on it, and I've added my mix to it, and the conversation has continued from there as well. So here's another example of a student not only sharing what they learned, what they discovered, but also sharing about other artworks that they've seen. So, if we take a look at the time over here, it's uh, mid three minutes past midnight. Um, and I think that's a nice sign. That's a nice sign because this space has become a 24-7 24, 24 learning environment for us. Not so good for me, actually, but for, uh, for them, I think it's, it's great. Let's see, what time did I reply? Uh, I replied five minutes later, four minutes later. So I was awake at that time as well. Um, but it, it's, it's really nice to see that the students who are, in, perhaps in their spare time, perhaps instead of playing Candy Crush, are you know, looking at interesting things and posting it up. Um, and here, I posted up a photograph, uh, sorry, a link to uh, another artist that was directly related to this. Uh, other artwork. So that means I could calibrate and target my responses specifically to the experiences that they first shared. So they first shared an experience about this artist in Hong Kong, and I found another one of similar to, to be able to extend and continue the conversation. Another use that I've had for Facebook is to be able to tell the class what I thought when the class was over. So. Um, at the end of the day, after my class, especially for certain classes, uh, that I felt there were certain pertinent things that happened or certain important things that happened, I would actually go back home, get onto Facebook, and I would actually tell them, hey, this is what I thought about what happened today. This is what I feel. This is like a, a kind of feedback. So um, in a traditional setting, I would have probably only been able to do this a week later. Uh, using these tools, I, would have been, I, I was able to do it within a couple of hours after, that, after the session. So here are some observations. In the absence of a dedicated 24-7 access to Art Studio, which we don't have here, uh, the online platform can assist in developing a community of learners. Um, I found that it tends to improve the students' work performance when they're unified by a similar task, though. Uh, let me explain. The second point is really, really interesting. I have all kinds of different courses that I teach, and uh, one of the courses, they all have similar... Convergence not a good word to use, but they have sort of similar convergent work goal. That means, let's say, they all have to take photographs of, say, their family or something like that. And when they have convergent goals, a uh, platform like Facebook actually works quite well. Uh, because they, they are able to share experiences. I've done a class where, they do, uh, where, they, where they're doing an FYP, a final year project. And in the FYP, it's divergent goals. Everyone's chasing after their own personal destiny. And Facebook didn't work very well there. No one was particularly interested in what their neighbor was doing. Everyone was in a divergent path. So um, these were, this was actually one of the big observations I made. Uh, and it affected how I structure my classes and, and how I use Facebook in my classes. Uh, the like button seems to be an interesting motivator for production and continued interaction online. Um, I was talking to a teacher who's now in secondary school, and he also uses Facebook. And uh, what he does is this. He tells the students, if you have read this message, and you understand my instruction, press like. <laughs> and then he'll get 
you know, 40 likes, and then he knows, okay, the class has read my instruction and they have understood it. Whether is it 100% effective, I don't know. Perhaps it is. Um, as a if, you, if you're a teacher and you sat in class and everyone's just nodding at you as you're talking, that's not a really good indicator that they understand either. Sometimes they're just doing that to, so that you'll carry on and then they can go for lunch soon after that. So the like button has some interesting uses. It may work, actually. The second point that I have here is, uh, is an observation is that um, Facebook doesn't teach in that sense. It's not a teacher. It helps engage people. It helps bring people together. And that's what I want. I want to bring people together so that they will learn, that they will be interested in learning. I'm also trying to, uh, I'm trying to reduce the traditional teaching and transfer the onus of learning towards the student, and which is also useful for my target audience of art teachers. I'm also trying to make it less didactic, and I want to try and make students ready to take charge of their own knowledge. Okay, this is what I'm saying here, okay? Um, what I found is this, when, I have, when we have classes in, in our department that are very active in learning, students engaging, doing all kinds of stuff, what happens is that when they hop off to the next class where there's a lecture like this, so boring, don't like, all right? And there is this issue happening that I'm seeing that there is this a rift in between experiences and suddenly the lecture can become very, very dull and boring and they want to be doing stuff. I don't have a solution for it, it's an observation that I've made. So with that observation, I mean, I think all teachers will need to sort of manage how they deliver knowledge or, or facilitate learning in this environment where there is a lot of stimulation and an activity going on with the students. Um, the other thing that I found is that I've also had to manage my expectation and reliance on the teacher. Um, when I first started using Facebook, I wasn't quite smart enough, so students would all post their things and then wait and everything be silent until I write. And I had to say, look, 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 this is not my portal for you to, it's not a lecture portal, this is your sharing portal. Uh, so I've had to also manage that expectations to try and move between teacher-centered and student-centered. So the politics of the classroom. My best compliment was from my worst student review. In one damning review, it was really, really bad, okay? In one damning review, one of my class students ended by saying, I learned a lot from this class. Teacher did not teach anything. <laughs> Sometimes the, performance, the politics of teaching expects a certain type of performance. They do, students do expect a certain performance like what I'm doing now. And unfortunately, in this new environment, in this new approach in teaching and learning, it doesn't always happen. So final thoughts. I'd like to see, uh, for myself at least, a diminished, diminished role as a teacher and growth of a, more of an activator for students. And, uh, and managing the shift in what a teacher does. Managing the student's expectation of what a teacher does. So thank you. <laughs>